This is Twit. It's time. It's time to say hello to Car Guy, Sam Abul Samad, Principal Researcher at Guy House Insights. He is also the host of the fabulous Wheel Bearings podcast. We had a Wheel Bearings takeover on Twit a few weeks ago. It was so much fun. Great episode. With Nicole and, uh, and Robbie. Hello, Sam. Hello, Leo and Micah. How are Hello. you guys doing today? You're sitting in front of one of the cars I've been considering for my next vehicle. Sincere? The uh, VW ID Buzz? Yeah. It's really cute. It's like a VW yeah. van yeah. updated. It's electric. I kind of like it. It is, yeah. That That, that is the, uh, the, the ID Buzz. Uh, which was first shown as a concept, I'll say back in 2018, maybe 17. It's, it was quite a while. Uh, I was at the, the reveal at the Detroit Auto Show back then. Yeah, it was like five or six years ago. And um, they finally launched a production version of the, the ID Buzz in Europe uh, last year. Is it coming to um, America? It is coming to America. <sighs> there's there's um, there's two versions of it. There's the the one that's in the picture behind me. Uh, is the short wheelbase it's version. so cute. It looks like a little uh, honeycomb. It's a two-row, so it's a five-seater. Yeah. This is what um, Jammer then, B wants to go to Red Rocks to see uh, yeah. Umphreys McGee in. No, he yeah. wants the long camper. Is there a camper van version? There, That is coming. Um, wow. So what we're getting here in North America is a little bit longer version with three rows of seats. So it'll seat uh, seven or eight, I think. Uh, and that's coming uh, first half of next year. Uh, they recently unveiled that version uh, at an event in Santa Monica about uh, about three or four weeks ago. Oh, so um, cool. But the reason why I have this one up here, uh, this is actually the short wheelbase version. So this is the version that's on sale now in Europe. Uh, is this one, this one is one you won't be able to buy uh, unless you happen to own a very large fleet um, because uh, this one is fully automated. This is a robo taxi, a prototype robo taxi. Ah. Um, Volkswagen had originally started working on this program uh, a couple of years ago with Argo AI, which was a company that was founded with funding from Ford and then eventually VW invested in it. Um, and so they were working on this uh, with Argo. They've had them had automated versions of this testing in Munich and uh, Hamburg, um, and I think maybe Hanover. Um, since sometime early in 2022 or maybe late 2021. Um, unfortunately, for a lot of reasons, I'm not going to go into today, today um, Argo was shut down last fall. Um, and uh, uh, so Volkswagen had to come up with an alternate plan. Uh, and so they switched their allegiance over to an Israeli company called Mobileye, which is majority owned, was until relatively recently, fully owned by Intel. Um, Intel still owns about 94, 93% of the shares in Mobileye. Uh, they did an IPO last year, but Mobileye has been developing their own automated driving system. And after the shutdown of Argo, VW opted to work with Mobileye on this program. And um, this past week, uh, they announced that the first batch of 10 of these equipment, 10 of these ID buzzes equipped with the Mobileye automated driving system are now testing in Austin, Texas. Huh. Uh, so they're not just in Germany. They're here in the U.S. in in Austin, and uh, they're they're going to be testing these. They're I think they're currently still doing uh, some mapping and and some initial testing, uh, but they're going to be testing these um, over the next couple of years in Austin, uh, where there are already um, some. Uh, there's already a commercial robo taxi service running. Uh, that I can't remember if we talked about it here on the show or not um, with Cruise. Uh, you and you and Nicole took a ride in the cruise, didn't we did. you? Yeah. yeah. And had a few it issues. Wasn't ideal, it. was it? <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so there's uh, there's a video that's on the uh, on the Wheel Bearings YouTube channel that you can see uh, where we shot a video during our ride. Um, and if you if you go there, you can you can find that. My friend Charlie uh, lives in Bernal Heights in San Francisco, and he says that uh, for a while. It was just jammed with cruise vehicles. He thought they were sending him up there for testing because it's very hard to drive uh, up there, very narrow streets. Uh, yeah. uh, he says it's, it's stopped. But San Francisco residents who have been inundated between Waymo and Cruz with these self-driving vehicles are are getting a little bit unhappy about it. Annoyed. Them. Annoyed. Yeah. The Verge said that some of them are putting out orange traffic cones to thwart, yep. to thwart them. 
Yeah, basically turning them into unicorns, sticking just sticking a traffic the cone sensors. on the hood of the Chevy yeah. Bolt, um, <laughs> and it just sits yeah, there. Apparently, <laughs> yeah, apparently, it confuses it enough that it doesn't go anywhere. Oh, um, wow! Yeah, the uh, uh, emergency officials, you know, fire, the fire department, the police, um, the uh, San Francisco Municipal Transit Authority, they're all pretty unhappy with the uh, with the performance of these automated vehicles running around San Francisco. They're causing blockages, traffic blockages. Uh, yeah, this was during the Pride Parade uh, the other week. They just get stuck. Uh, two, two Waymo vehicles. You know, they they got to a road closure, and they didn't know what to do. Oh no! Um, and you know, police directing traffic couldn't figure out how to communicate. With this has become a problem to go because they no longer yeah. there's a unicorn. They no longer have safety drivers, so there's no human right. inside. And so uh, I was wondering why I saw all those cones in San Francisco yesterday. Now I know <laughs> they're waiting for a, a unicorn to show up. It's kind of the reverse, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I don't. So I don't like this. <laughs> I, I, I do. I, I think this is fantastic. Oh, boy. I feel bad for San Francisco. What, what in a lot of like, cities. Micah, the fact that they're that people are doing these cones or that these cars are driving around San Francisco. No, it's not that the the car I'm I guess I'm a bootlicker. He's I sensitive. don't mind that the cars are driving around San Francisco. Very I do mind that they are placing <laughs> because first of all those traffic cones were in those places for a reason. I don't know what they are, but they were there for a reason. So to take them and put them somewhere else, you shouldn't. I'm a law follower. That's what I'm having a problem with. I, I have a traffic well, cone. Well, we don't know that's... where people are getting the cones. No, no. I have one in my yard. Our TikTok was very clearly suggesting just that people just go it. find one from yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but I have one in my yard that's lying around if anybody wants to use it. There if I go. see a Waymo, I'll run up and put it on If you take there. Leo's traffic cone, then I'm okay Somebody with left it. I think. Somebody left it behind at some point. It's but these are also like, I, I understand this sort of argument about these for-profit companies maybe taking jobs. I get that too. It's not just jobs. They're tying up the streets. Yes. yes. They're annoying. But does making them stop in the road not also tie up the street? Yeah, well, maybe it ties it up road? enough that these guys leave that town. They doing it. Well, I think that's what a lot of people are hoping for Got is that it. they'll go somewhere else. Um, you know, or, or stop, you know, just stop testing on public roads until they get these systems working better. Uh, you know, it's, you know, for the foreseeable future, you know, this is not likely to cause any significant, um, job loss. In fact, uh, you know, it, there's new jobs that are created because, you know, somebody still has to clean these things and, you know, charge them and do, do maintenance on these vehicles. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's different jobs. I think what we saw driving around. in New York city but, with the adv advent of Uber was not mm -hmm. a loss of taxi jobs so much as a complete congestion of the city. Yes. Because there were and too that's many what's vehicles. Happening in San Francisco. Ah, okay. and, and this, this is, this has long been one of the challenges that I've been talking about and writing about around deploying these vehicles. You know, you know, if, if unregulated, these companies are just going to go and throw who knows how many of these vehicles out on the road, um, much as they did with uh, scooters. When we started seeing scooter sharing popping up a few years ago, I was I was uh, about to say that when that happened in San Francisco about four years ago, every city street was strewn with dead scooters, all the right. sidewalks. Oh, yeah, it was a was... real hazard. Now. They kicked them out is what they ended up right. doing. And I think, you know, what what needs to happen, you know, before these things are widely deployed is we need to put some rules in place in cities. You know, there need to be some limits on how many of these vehicles can be deployed, uh, where and when they can be deployed, that sort of thing. Um, you know, much as we've done with, you know, we, it has always been done with taxis, you know, in any I mean, going with back. With medallions. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and actually, you know, the whole idea of limiting the number of cabs is not a new concept. It actually goes back 400 years. Yeah. The, you know, long before we had cars, um, the original London, the, the term hack for a taxi goes back 400 years to the, the creation of the, uh, the London hackney cap, which was actually a carriage. It was a two wheeled carriage, you know, with a, a driver on there. And, you know, these were used as cabs in, mm -hmm. in London 400 years ago. And they had this problem then with you know too many of them causing congestion and so the the local officials put limits on how many of these could operate in the city at any time and that has always been the case with taxis and that needs to be the case with these vehicles at least until such time as they are um, ubiquitous enough that people uh, stop driving personal vehicles 
And because otherwise we're just adding to the congestion, especially if these things aren't utilized enough. If, if they're not, if ideally, you know, with these thing, with these robo taxis, what happens is people get out of their own vehicles and they use these and, you know, because most personally owned vehicles operate about 5% of the day. They yeah. might operate one to two hours a day. So they're idle 95% of the, the time. The dream is sensible, which is to get rid of private car ownership. Mm -hmm. Right. You have shared, 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 shared use of vehicles. It's a nightmare. And then it's if, you, nightmare going, if you, no, no, it's a nightmare that. going into San Francisco right, right now. If I could beckon yeah. one of these vehicles and yeah. it would take me and I'd not. But it's always with big kind of tech stuff. transitions. There's this period of time where it's very disruptive and yeah. un right. unpleasant for and, everyone. Yeah. And the, yeah, the California Public Utilities Commission was supposed to have a meeting to vote uh, on June 27th on giving uh, permits to Waymo and Cruise to operate 24 hours a day throughout the entire city of San Francisco uh, with paid passengers. Oh. They delayed that meeting. That's actually going to happen uh, the end of next week now. Bring your traffic um, cones, kids. Do you think that everybody put, go to the hearings? Do you think they put traffic cones on the first taxi drivers back in the day over their heads whenever like the horse and I, buggy people had to switch? For I, I somehow doubt that. <laughs> what was the protest? But I'm sure there were some other kinds of protests. Yeah. I, you know, so it's I have mixed feelings about this because I do agree that the future of, you know, uh, much reduced private car ownership um, and, and ubiquitous transport is a great future. I mean, we, we kind of drop the ball on public trans transit with streetcars and buses and uh and subways that's right. a shame yeah but uh maybe we can we can you know get that back with uh self-driving vehicles but well i think we're not there yet we actually, and it's a mess what we right actually now. need is a mixed ecosystem because you know what you don't what you don't want is you don't want only robo taxis right you don't want only scooters you don't want right. only buses no that's and, a good point you subways. need it all you, yeah. you actually need it because they each have their strengths and weaknesses for different kinds of trips. Yeah, yeah. And so you need a mixed ecosystem of all of these that, that uh, coordinate together, work together, you know, so, you know, um, you know, because what you want is maximum utilization of all of them. Right. And, you know, for mass transit, you know, you can't have buses and, and subways going everywhere in a city, but, you know, if you can have, you know, smaller vehicles like this and scooters, that feed into the mass transit lines, you know, where you have the highest density. So you have more people using the, the buses and subways or trains being fed in, you know, in the for first mile and last mile by smaller vehicles. Then you can actually start to have a real impact potentially on congestion and safety. Well, I have mixed feelings. I do want an ID buzz. <laughs> I want to get, I have to say, uh, I don't live in San Francisco, but my friends who do are not totally enamored of it. And I have to say, when you ride in one of these things, you might not share the, your, the enthusiasm the tech companies have for it. Uh, my friend Charlie said, uh, actually, as Brock said, uh, it's like a grandma driving. It's very, it's they, very, they do tend to drive fairly conservatively because they're, they're biased tentative. for safety. Yeah. Yeah. As they should be. Yeah. I mean, they're, uh, not, they're, but they, they shouldn't be driving like a New York taxi driver. No, but they also fail at strange positions and places. And that's, there's the problem. Yeah. Now, isn't there supposed to be somebody monitoring this who can drive at home, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. But maybe they're just not doing a good job of that. There are too many. Well, on the road or I mean, there's, there's also, uh, you know, to, in order to monitor it, you have to have a connection to the vehicle. Oh. And if you lose that connection, you know, as, as you're well aware, you know, especially in cities, you know, a lot of times you'll hit cellular dead zones. And if uh. you, if you don't have a reliable connection, uh, well, then it's problem. possible that whoever is doing the monitoring uh, is not able to see what happens when oh. it gets stuck and is not able to provide it with guidance because they have remote guidance systems. So if the vehicle gets confused and doesn't know what to do, someone back in a control center is watching and they can step in and provide it some hints, you know, as to what to do next. You know, how, how you know, if there's a new construction zone and the vehicle is not quite sure the best, the safest way to get around that, somebody can step in and say, okay, you know, go, go around to the left. Um, you know, but yeah. make sure you pause and check yeah, yeah. Yeah. and, and gives it, gives it some hints and then lets it go. But if if you lose the connectivity to the vehicle, then you can't do that, and that's that's where the problem part of the problem. I comes share, out. Micah, your sympathy for the poor little AI. It's doing not, its best. <laughs> it's doing its best, and you put a 
cone on its hood and it goes, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, sh I share that. I, my animosity, my animus is entirely, entirely, towards big tech, which yeah. just wants, you know, profits at all costs and take over the world and, and screw everybody else. And I think that, that we're starting to. Well, I mean, that's capitalism. That's, that's not just yeah. big tech. That's all capitalism. But big tech's really that's, good at it. And uh, yeah. I think it's maybe time. To capitalize on capitalism. For the rest of us to, uh, to say, no, that's not what we want. We like tech. Look, we're a tech channel. We love technology. I'm going to buy some stock and traffic cone manufacturing. That's a smart move. <laughs> Because uh, I think Leo movie. just got a bunch of people to buy traffic cones. <laughs> uh, Sam Abul Sam, it's always a pleasure. Uh, when is the ID Buzz uh, camper version coming? You said early next year? Some, some Sometime in 2024. They haven't given an exact date, uh, but there will be a camper version available. Uh, the pop-up, the traditional bus, VW bus oh, pop-up camper will be yeah. available as an option yeah. uh, on the ID Buzz at, at some stage. They haven't said be exactly awesome. when, but. Some, sometime in next sometime next year. I was, and uh, maybe sometime you can uh, review this. I was, uh, BMW announced their i5 EV uh, last month. Yeah, the, uh, they haven't had a uh, chance to to um, do the drives for that yet. Uh, it's I between that and the camper van for me. It's my capitalist months. side and my hippie side <laughs> uh, fighting, <laughs> fighting. But I, I did put a deposit down on the i5. You tell me if I made a mistake, okay? Well, I've driven the i7 and it's based on the same platform. It's basically smaller than the i7 and better looking, frankly. Um, so I, I I think you, if you were to get the i5, I've driven the i4 and the i7, which are smaller and larger than the i5. Right. Um, and use a lot of the same hardware. It's right in the middle. So I yeah. don't think you'll be disappointed. All right. The ID California is called, not the ID Buzz, the ID California. The, oh. No, it's the, it's the ID Buzz. Um, California you know, edition. The camper may be called the California. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Mr. Sam Abul Sam at Guidehouse Insights. My pleasure. Always a pleasure. We'll see you soon on uh, yep. on Twit. Take care, my friend. Bye. All right. Bye. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. If your IT training isn't raising your team to its highest level, you need ACI Learning. Prepare for certification examinations with practice questions. Retake tests so you're ready before you take your exam. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com twit for information on a free two-week trial for your team.